Okay, so here are some English words as they would appear in the dictionary. So, child is the word. That's the word. Going to start off really basic here. And then N indicates that it is a noun. In other words, you get the word and the part, part of speech. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so girl is a noun. Stand is a verb. When is a conjunction, and tired is an adjective. Easy, easy, easy. Now, there's a lot that you don't see here, right? You don't get to see in the dictionary entry that the plural is children. Oh, children. And you don't see that the past tense of stand is stood, wildly irregular. Boo. English. Yeah. Okay. So you don't see those things. But this is a dictionary entry in English. Now you got to know the word and you got to know the part of speech. Now in Latin, different parts of speech will require different things in their dictionary entry. So I've shown you a couple nouns, one from each declension. Okay, so the Latin dictionary entry for nouns contains the nominative, uh, singular of the noun, and then the genitive, singular. And the reason why we get both is because there are a lot of nouns that you can only tell the stem of from the genitive singular. In fact, you can always find the stem of a noun, and we'll talk more about what that means later, by taking the genitive ending off of the genitive form. So up here, fili, that's the stem there, and kib, that's the stem there for food. Okay, but then after those, you need the gender. Here we have feminine, down here we have masculine. If you see nominative form, genitive form, gender, you know you have a noun. Noun. D. For verbs, on the other hand, you're going to need something that are called principal parts. Principal. I don't know when I'm spelling things out, I have to say them slower. Principal. Principal. O A L. Parts, principal parts. Yeah. And uh, we're going to give you two. Ultimately, there are four. You're not going to have to worry about the third or the fourth for quite a while, but you need both. And let me show you why. You need the first one. That is the present tense first singular verb. This is the I verb form. Okay, and the second part is the infinitive, which you'll notice has a strong tendency to end in R-E. Okay, so amo, amara. And then you need the second part because this tells you what conjugation it is. This should be a long A there, makron. Um, but because it's a long A, you know this is first conjugation. And that lets you know how to form the rest of the forms. Similarly, down below, you have respondeo, respond, that should be a makron there, long E. Okay, this is second conjugation. So again, you get first person singular, present, and you get the infinitive, infinitive. Ago agra, short e, so it's third. In other words, a, g, short e, r, e, that's the infinitive. So instead of respondera, it's pronounced agra. No agera here, it's agra. And you get the First person singular. And down here, first person singular. And then you get the infinitive again. And here it is era with a long I macron indicating that it is fourth conjugation. So if you see a first person singular and an infinitive, you know you have a verb. I'm going to circle it a bunch of times. Verb. Verb. Okay, for adjectives, these are really obvious because you need a masculine, a feminine, and a neuter. We haven't done much with neuter, but you need a masculine, a feminine, and a neuter, and that's what you have. Here's the masculine ending, us, and that will continue. Us, e, o, um, o, right? Those are the masculine endings for adjectives. Ah, ah, I, I, um, ah, right? Feminine endings. And then it turns out your nominative singular, that's what these are, nominative singular endings. R for neuter, um. 
Same thing down here, paratus. And if we were going to continue to climb it, we'd go o, uh, sorry, us, e, o, um, o, e, or, um, I can't stop myself. See, once we get going, e's, o's, e's, and then i, 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 okay, all the way down. And then we'll teach you these later. But that's what you get, masculine, feminine, neuter. So if you're seeing a dictionary entry, you know what part of speech it is by what you're seeing. If you're seeing a masculine, a feminine, and a neuter form, you get an adjective, right? If you see a noun, you're only going to get one gender, and it'll give you a letter saying what gender it is, either F, M, or N. And if it's a verb, you're going to start to see principal parts. You'll see an infinitive in there. But unlike in English, these principal parts, uh, or sorry, these uh, words don't switch uh, their part of speech. Unlike in English, where something like blind can be an, a verb, like I blind you, or it can be an adjective, like the blind man, or you know, it can even be a noun, like the hunter waited in the duck blind until uh, a, a duck showed up. Okay, unlike in English, where that happens all the time, I don't know why I put a box around that, unlike in English, this, always an adjective, this, always an adjective, amo, I love, always a verb, verb. Okay, here's a little bit of good news. For prepositions, check mark, I guess, adverbs and conjunctions, they don't have to agree with a noun in case, gender, and number. They don't have gender. They don't have to be in different cases because they're never going to be the subject or the direct object. And they're never going to be verbs. They don't need tense. So really, they only have one form. So when you see them in the dictionary, it will be ad prep. Well, for prepositions, you do need to know what case it takes. Preps are followed by accusative. Ad is followed by accusative. In is a prep. Can be followed by accusative or ablative. So that's what you'll see with prepositions. With conjunctions, still, you'll just say conjunction, C-O-N-G-J, conjunction. And then mox and bene, A-D-V, adverb. They never change form. That's a nice thing about prepositions, adverbs, and conjunctions. No tense, no case, no other forms than the one you see. Now, if you're really sharp, you may have noticed that I left out pronouns. All right, pronouns do have to change form because <clears throat> they're in place of a noun. We haven't really talked much about pronouns. Um, they take the place of a noun, so um, they need to agree with whatever it is they're representing. If it's him, it's going to have to be masculine. If it's her, it's going to have to be feminine. Okay, and we'll talk more about this later. So you're going to need a masculine, a feminine, and a neuter form. So these will also look a lot like adjectives. Whoops, I'm spelling adjective wrong. Adjectives. They look a lot like that. But you guys haven't learned any pronouns yet. You've, you've been seeing one, am or aos or a um, these are all a different pronoun. This comes from is, a, uh, id, but I anticipate myself. Um, so, pronouns look a lot like adjectives in their dictionary entry, but they only are specific words, and we'll talk about those specific words. And I'm just drawing boxes around everything. Here's another box, and another box, and yeah, that's pronouns.